the slides, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I would be uh, discussing about the role of screening for renal cell carcinomas in patients who undergo renal transplant. So I would be discussing the uh, latest evidence which was uh, published in Journal of Clinical Oncology by the um, researchers from University of Texas. Patients who undergo renal transplant are at increased risk of malignancies. Uh, the most common ones are skin malignancies, and the other ones are either infection related or infection unrelated. The renal transplant recipients, because of developing malignancies, are at demerit because the survival decreases. And malignancies in transplant recipients is one of the leading cause of mortality. So the most RCCs which arise in renal transplant recipients are from the native kidneys, but they can also arise in the allograft. As already discussed, they affect the long-term survival. So this was a retrospective observational study where the data of last 20 years was collected. The main methodology uh, revolved around uh, comparing the renal uh, cancer stage at the diagnosis and the survival in patients who underwent screening and who were not screened. A total of 1,998 patients uh, underwent transplant in last 20 years in their study, out of which 20 patients or 1% of the patients developed RCC. The most common histology was clear cell carcinoma followed by papillary carcinoma. Of the 20 patients who developed malignancy, 75% were males, out of which total 20, African Americans were 50%. The Asian group of population who developed RCC were around 10%. The median time to diagnose RCC post-transplant was around eight years or 96 months. And the RCC developed in the native kidneys in 60% of the patient and in 40% in the allograft kidney. Out of 20 patients who had RCC, there were 12 patients who underwent screening either by ultrasound or by CT scan done annually or every two years. And in most of these patients, the stage of, at the diagnosis was either stage one or stage two. All patients were cured by uh, nephrectomy or uh, thermoablative therapies, and the mortality in this uh, screening patients was 0%. Compared to eight patients who developed RCC without screening, majority of them had stage three or stage four disease, and there were two patients who died because of metastatic disease. Uh, the, one of the limitations of this study is that they did not compare the cost-effective analysis for the screening. So the evidence which we have uh, from one of the other uh, narrative review which was published in 2022 was that screening for RCC after transplantation has not been found to be cost-effective. This is another evidence, although this is an old paper. This is the paper which studied almost 1,000 recipients and they found that the the uh, gains in the life expectancy was less than 1.5 days at relatively high cost. Compared with no screening, the absolute gain in survival is only two deaths from renal cell carcinoma avoided per thousand recipients if the patients were screened annually for 62 years. However, they, the study also found that the cost effectiveness is there in the patients who are high-risk individuals, especially the patients who have acquired cystic diseases or who have a family history of renal cell carcinoma or suffering from familial syndromes like VHL. In another systemic review of clinical practice guidelines published in 2017, uh, looking at the guidelines which specifically focused on the transplanted organs, uh, kidney, and the cancer screening was done for kidneys, only one guidelines, European Best Practices Guidelines, recommended screening by ultrasound. Rest of the guidelines did not recommend screening. So to conclude, screening for RCC in renal transplant patient is, effect, is an effective tool for early diagnosis and to reduce RCC-related mortality. However, it is not cost-effective. It may be considered in high-risk individuals. I would like to thank my teachers and the organizers for this opportunity. Thank you.